This video content is strictly for educational purposes only. All demonstrations, techniques, and information provided in this video are meant to help you understand cybersecurity better. We strongly advise against using any of this information for illegal activities or unethical practices. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Welcome back again. We're going to showcase a new tool today. We're going to showcase a new tool. Uh, this tool is actually uh, much akin to Derb. It's actually called GoBuster. So we're going to utilize GoBuster today and kind of uh, go through a process of a different word list associated with it. Now, the great news is that as we're going through GoBuster, uh, it's another tool in your arsenal if you're trying to identify maybe some images or maybe you're trying to identify uh, specific text documents or whatever. Right. So the good news is that Derb Buster or excuse me, GoBuster has a lot of great uh, usability. The bad news is that the help documentation is poorly lacking, poorly lacking. And so you kind of have to know what you're doing in order to get it to function properly, unfortunately. But that's why we're here. That's why we're having this video today. So I've got new box open, which I'm actually going to hack later today. And I was looking at this and I was like, this is the perfect opportunity to kind of showcase this tool. So with that said, let's jump into it. I'm going to get into my Kali box. We're going to open up that terminal to start off with, just as always. Let me blow that up so you can see what I'm doing. We do IF config and get our IP address. We can see we're at 10.0.2.13. From here, I'm going to do an nmap. Of course, a switch SN 10.0.2.0 forward slash 24. This is going to find that IP address of that new box for us so we can start running this tool. And we can see here that I've actually got multiple IP addresses associated on this network, meaning I have more than one box. Now I know I've got a Kali that's updating in the background, uh, and so it is going through its processes. However, let's assume that I don't know for the sake of this conversation. Uh, so I'm just going to do an nmap, and then I could do a TAC O like that for operating system, and we'll just do a 10.0.2.0 slash 24. I need to put a sudo in front of there, otherwise it's going to give me some problems, and I'll type in that password. It's going to run through and tell me what the operating systems are associated with every device on there. Uh, if I knew, which I do, I could figure out very quickly which IP address it was. But for the sake of argument, let's assume I don't. Let's assume that I don't know which IP address is which. This is a great way of finding it out just based on the operating system associated with it. Now, here we go. We've got three IP addresses. We've got 2.13. And we can see that it does not give a specific operating system details. I got 2.2, and it provides me some good operating system stuff. And I've got 2.9, and I've got 2.3. Now, I know I'm operating on what? There's 2.2. If I remember correctly, I'm on 2.9, I think. So let's do an IF config. Rook IF config. There we go. I'm on 2.13. So it's going to be 2.2 which we can see 4.5 Linux, which is an earlier version, right? We can see 2.3, which is just VirtualBox. And we can see way up here, 2.2, which, yeah, I, I think that's VirtualBox as well. So we've it's gotta be 2.22, all right? So let's do this. To verify, I could just open up a terminal. This would probably be easier way of doing this, right? And I could just go to 10.0.2.22. And there you go. It opens a website. Very, very plain default website for us, but that's okay. All right, we promised you GoBuster. So I'm going to type in GoBuster, and I want to point out that it's white. It's not blue, which means I don't have it installed on this machine. It's asking me if I want to install it. E Why, yes. Yes, I do want to install it. So we're going to install GoBuster. It's going to take a second. All right, so now I've got GoBuster. Let's do that famous GoBuster tack H for our help menu. And you can see that it tells us we can use word list. We can do verbose. We can do threads, number of concurrent threads, default is 10. We can do quiet. We can do output string. We can do a pattern string. We can do a help. We can do a delay. And then it provides us how we want to do the completion. Do we want to do a directory? Do we want to do an NS? Do we want to do a fuzz? How do we want to run our item? And then it just tells us our usage is command. Not very intuitive. Doesn't give us a lot of stuff there. So let's start by just typing in GoBuster. And then from here, uh, I feel like we need to do a uh, an IP, right? So we need to do directory, right? So Because we're looking for a directory is what we're looking for, right? Now, it doesn't tell us this. And this is where I have a problem with it, is it doesn't tell you that, hey, you need to put a TAC U in there.
to actually run it. So very not intuitive, right? So when you do attack you, and then HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 10.0.0.2.22, that's gonna provide us for the directory. Then from here, we can kind of go in and say, what do we wanna do with it? Again, it doesn't tell you, it doesn't tell you. This is why I don't like this tool very much. You do attack X, and from that attack X, I could tell it exactly what I want it to search for. Do I want it to search for JPEGs? Do I want to search it for uh, PNGs? What do I want to do? I'm going to do JPEG, PNG, no spaces between it, by the way. I have a hard time with that. Uh, PNG, I could do a GIF, and then I could do a JPEG. You'll see me typing in that space every time. I can't help myself, right? So it's going to search the directory for images throughout the web page, throughout the web directory, right? <clears throat> and then finally, I need to provide it a word list. So I'm going to do a tac tac word list, just like that. Uh, again, doesn't tell you you need to do it. You could do just attack W, right? We could just do attack W. It does tell us that. It tells us right here, right? So we could do a word list. Uh, and I could just do a regular W, just like that, okay? Now I need to give it to word list. So I'm going to do a user and then share word list, derb, because we're going to steal derb's word list, and then common.txt. Okay, and so I know big, big, long string. I could put it somewhere else, right? But that's where I'm going to steal it from. I'm going to steal Derb's word list for this action, right? And so we're just going to hit enter, and it's going to go through the process of looking for all kinds of images associated with this tool, with this directory, right? And so there you have it. Now I could go in and I can look uh, and I could say, okay, what do I have associated with this, right? So I can go in here and I can start looking at different items, right? So we see these uh, with the period in front of it. Probably not going to find too much in there. But what about this image? What about this index? What about this manual? All this stuff is available for us to look at. So I can do, uh, let's do the, now look at the code. I want to point this out before we get too far, right? See this code, 403, right? So we can see status 403 and 403 is a forbidden error. Right, so it indicates the web server understands the user's request, but can't gain access to the web page. Now, 200 is 200 okay, which means it's actually there. 301 indicates a redirect, right? And so we've got our 403s. Now I could tell you if I were to take, for instance, 403, I don't even need to put this in there, but I'm going to for our example today. I'm gonna throw that sucker in there. And I'm gonna go to 10.0.2.22 forward slash, and then we'll do that, right? We'll do that paste right there. Uh, and it's going to say forbidden. It's not going to give me access. Doesn't matter what I try to do. It's not going to give me access, right? But what about what about the 200? What about the index, right? What about the index? Index. What was it? Dot HTML, I believe, is what it was. We can see that brings us up. Let me move this over so you can see what I'm talking about here, right? We see that index right there on that error on that 200 right there, right? And we can see the manual. The manual is going to give us a redirect. So manual, just like that. I can spell correctly, which I can apparently today, I can do a manual and it's going to provide me that information right there, right? So great little tool if you know how to use it correctly. Uh, horrible tool if you're using it for the first time and trying to use the help menu to kind of identify what's going on. All right, uh, let's, do, let's do another one. Let's do without the image. Let's do it without the, the, the tack X in there. We'll just get rid of that entire line right there. We're just going to do the word list and let it run. You can see here that it's going to go through and provide us less information. So it's not looking, in this case, for anything other than the directories, right? So we didn't get the, the image, right? If you scroll up, we can see on this one, we got image.jpg because it was looking for it. We got some other JPEGs and images. On this one, it didn't. It didn't find anything. All it found was the directories uh, associated with it. So, I mean, you got to use it in conjunction. But that TAC-X, that's a really nice little feature.